So let's take a look at an interesting subject. Interesting word found in the Bible. Preach. Preach. Kind of interesting. And preach. Take your Bibles to Nehemiah 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. And we're going to start off looking at the first time that these words show up. And we'll look at some other verses of interest. So, Nehemiah chapter 6, looking at the word preach, shows up 50 times in the Bible. The first time it shows up, Nehemiah 6, 5 through 7. Then Sanballat, an enemy of Israel, his servants, his servant, uh, then sent, sent back his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, it was reported among the heathen, and Gershuma saith it, that thou and the Jews, okay, here comes a bunch of lies, all the way down to verse 7. Sam Ballot writes a letter, and he writes a letter of lies. Think to rebel for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. All right, he's accusing Nehemiah, we're going to build the city, we're going to build this wall, so Nehemiah can be the king. It's not true. Nehemiah's heart is for the Lord. Thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee. There's the first time preach shows up. And Jerusalem saying, there's a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king, according to these words, Come now therefore, and let us take counsel together. So the first time the word preach shows up is a lying letter that Sam Ballard says, Nehemiah's got men preach that Nehemiah is the king. Nehemiah is of Jerusalem. Jerusalem's going to be the big kingdom. Is it kind of interesting that the first time the word preach shows up in the Bible, it's by an enemy of God, enemy of the children of Israel, and proclaim that Nehemiah has men that preach that he's the king <laughs> a lie. That's kind of interesting. Preached. Past tense. Psalms 40. Psalms 40. Verse 9. Now we're just looking at the Bible. Psalms 40 verse 9. First time that preached, past tense, shows up in the Bible. 40 verse 9. And in 40 verse 9, we have the word preached 61 times. Psalms 40 verse 9. I have preached righteousness in a great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. Now that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the ministry, ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ when he is God manifesting the flesh going out dealing with Israel. With his 12 apostles, 12 disciples going out and teaching and preaching the kingdom. Now, preacher. Preacher. Ecclesiastes 1.1. 1, 1. Preacher. 11 times in the Bible. And the words of the preacher the son of David, king in Jerusalem, Solomon. Solomon's the first preacher in the Bible. And we know where he ended up. He ended up the man that went from serving God to serving multiple gods. Marrying women he shouldn't marry. Getting involved in things he should never have. And sorry that today in the church age, for some preachers, that is the sorry case that many show up and end up to be. Preaches, preaches, Romans 2, Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, there's only one time this shows up in the Bible, Romans chapter 2, verse 21, Romans 2, 21, there's only time, thou, thou therefore which teaches another, teaches thou not thyself, thou that preachest, 
only time that shows up. A man should not steal. Does thou steal? <laughs> That's interesting. The topic and the only time the word preach it shows up and you steal. Do you preach against stealing? Do you steal? Do you preach against adultery? Do you do adultery? Do you preach against lying? Do you lie? What do you do? What do you do compared to what you're preaching? Kind of interesting. I've met some preachers that preach and they don't practice what they preach. The word is called hypocrite. Preach it. Acts 19.13. Acts 19.13. Preach it. Acts 19.13. A certain the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, in the name of the Lord Jesus, there are men that are professed, possessed with devils. These vagabond Jews, you know, we're going to do exorcism in the name of Jesus. Say, we adjourn you, the, the devils, by Jesus whom Paul preaches. That's three times in the Bible. Now, what is preaching? The name of Jesus Christ is whom Paul preaches. That's an interesting one. The first time that shows up, it's, it's Paul, and it's about Jesus Christ. Preaching. Preaching. Jonah. Jonah. Of all places. Jonah 3, verse 2. Jonah 3, verse 2. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach... One, you know, we've already done preach. I was Nehemiah 6. Preach unto it the preaching. There's the first time that shows up. That I bid thee. Preaching 27 times in the Bible. And the first time is God told Jonah, you go preach to those people. And you preach what I tell you to preach. Going all the world and preach the gospel, the Bible says for preaching. So, here we go. Interesting. The first time the word preach shows up, it's a lie. The second time preached shows up, it's, it's Jesus. Preacher, first time is Solomon. Preaches, the first and only time is about, you know, hypocrisy. Preaches, three times, the first time it shows up, it's Paul preaching about Jesus. And then preaching, it's about lost people. By a man who wouldn't listen to God the first time. God told Jonah the first time, go to Nineveh. And he went the other direction. So let's look at some more verses here, if we shall. Ecclesiastes 1, 2. Again. Ecclesiastes 1, 2. Vanity of vanity, save the preacher. Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. Now, Ecclesiastes is a world point of view book in the Bible. Let's look at the world and see what it is. Vanity. That's the preacher. That's the first preacher in the Bible. And the first thing of the Bible and preaching for the preacher is the world is vanity. Don't love it. Don't have anything to do with it. And get out of it. Set your hearts on heaven, not, not on the earth with your treasures. Oh, that needs to be free. That needs the qualification for a man to get in the pulpit. The world is vanity. The world is vanity. Chapter 12, verse 8. Chapter 12, verse 8. Be equally asked. Chapter 12, verse 8. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. We're lacking that today. He still taught the people knowledge. He's supposed to teach the people knowledge of the holy. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. And that which was written was upright. Even words of truth. How's that one? 
That ought to be the call of the occasion for every preacher that's going to go in the pulpit. You got to find the words of truth. No lying. No jokes. No makeup stories to get the laugh. No preacher stories. No Baptist stories. The truth. If you're not preaching the truth, you're lying. It's a sin. Get right with God. Repent or get out of that pulpit. Be a liar. Be a hypocrite. You don't need to be in that pulpit. Isaiah 61.1. Isaiah 61.1. I've heard lying preachers. Get up in that pulpit and lie. That's a sin. Ooh, it's a sin. Isaiah 61.1. The Spirit of the Lord God, that's the Holy Spirit, is upon me, Jesus, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings, Jesus, unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, fix up men, souls, stick, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the, op and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year. Of the Lord. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to be type of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. We're supposed to, Jesus Christ is to be our ambassador. What are we to preach? Good tidings. You know what the good tidings is? It's the gospel. Good tidings means gospel. Gospel means good news. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Everybody ought to love everybody. We're going to let balloons and tootsie rolls and games and fun. We're going to use that to witness the kitties and all that. That ain't it. Go preach the gospel. Oh, we have a Bible. Yeah, five minutes Bible, ten minutes playtime, and 20 minutes of fooling around, and 30 minutes of the world. Where we say, get out of the world. Get out of the world. Preach the gospel. I let my light shine. Preach the good news. I, you are offending people. You turn people away. Preach the good tidings. That's what the Bible says. Nothing else. Matthew 3 1. Matthew 3 1. Matthew 3 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. What's he preaching? The Messiah is coming. The Lamb of God, which take away the... He's coming. Prepare yourselves. Be ready. That's what we ought to be preaching. Jesus is coming. Don't be caught on the wrong end of the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Forgive me, my throat. How's that? How's that for a message? 417. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preach! Repentance! Preach! Get right! Preach the gospel! You need to repent! It's churn or burn! That is not being preached out of many churches and pulpits today. Repentance is missing. That's not what Jesus would do. Yes, he would. There's a scripture. You just don't know and have not studied and you have not read your Bible. You listen to a fruitcake behind a pulpit. Give you all kinds of little floody kind of little egg and lilies and Christmas present messages. Oh, in the name of Satan. Verse 23. Verse 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Preachers are to preach and they are to teach the word of God. You got to preach to the people and you got to teach the people. You can't just be red faced, yelling and screaming and hollering and spitting over the front row. You got to be also up there. Teaching the people so they can learn, they can grow. You've got to give them food. Not every Sunday morning is a time for evangelistic message all the time. And then we don't have a Sunday night and you don't have a midweek service. How can you grow? You're not going to grow. 
It's the job of the preacher to preach and the job of the preacher to teach. That's what Jesus did. And there's a time to lift up your voice and there's a time to say, this is, this is what the Bible says. You got both. You got to do both. 9.35. Matthew 9.35. Matthew 9.35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He's going from place to place to place. Preaching. He's doing evangelistic work. He's doing street ministry work. He's going out door to door. He's going out to city the city he's going to corner to corner he's going where the people are going he's not just keeping in the church house he's going out to where the people are you're to have a public ministry as a preacher you're to preach and teach the gospel you're to teach your people the congregation and you're to go where the people are and preach he preaches the kingdom we preach the gospel how to be saved how you doing how you doing no. 10 7 and as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven's at hand today for the christian jesus is coming death is coming the wages of sin is death but the gift of god's eternal life through jesus christ our lord death is coming my friend and not only is death coming but if you don't believe on jesus christ so is hell you ain't gonna get out of hell you don't want to go to hell believe on the lord jesus christ be saved It's that simple. 1027. What I tell you in dark in darkness, that speak in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye on the housetops. Get out there. Get in the place where people are and preach the gospel. They'll say, keep it in the church. Jesus said, go on the housetop. They allow Santa Claus to be up on the house stop. Why don't they allow Jesus to be up on the house stop? Because he convicts them of their sin. He condemns them in their sins. Santa Claus would not do what Jesus Christ does. That's why Santa Claus is love. That's why they have their children look for Santa Claus and not Jesus. Up on the house stop, click, click, click. I just preach the gospel. How's that? How's that? 11, 1. 11 1 and it came to pass when jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples he departed thence to teach and to preach in their city men attention men of our church let's go out let's go out in the public ministry let's go tell people about jesus and guess what as the pastor of your church not only am i sending you out but i'm going to do the same thing you're doing in other words pastor preacher do what your congregation does you also partake in a public ministry. Don't say, everybody go out, tell your friends about Jesus, and you don't do nothing. Get everybody out there to pass out gospel tracts, and you don't either. You don't. You got them passing out gospel tracts, you got them in a public ministry, you got them knocking on doors. Go do the same. Practice what you preach. Remember that, what we read in Romans? Do you tell them to go out and tell people about Jesus? Do you two go out and tell people about Jesus? Oh, uh huh. See? 11.5. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the death here. The dead are raised up, and the, yeah. and the poor have the gospel preached to them. I mean, well, we're not going to raise no dead people up. We're not going to heal no cleansers. We're in the book of Matthew. We are in the dispensation of Jesus. Son of God, preaching to the Jews. But have you preached to the poor? Have you dealt with homeless people? I have. Some of them are pain in the neck. Some of them are just, just, just rowdy and all that. But there are some that will listen to you. I had a man one time. He didn't, he, he didn't hear all about Jesus. But it's been such a long time. But he, he told me about his family being the stonemakers. And making monuments and you know for the church and for the gravestones like i had a good time sitting down with him do you deal with the poor people if you go door knocking you're going to find some doors that are poor people do you deal with them 
I don't door knock, but I don't condone door. Hey, if that's your thing, amen, glory to God, I'll pray for you. Preach in the street in Daytona Beach, I deal with, with poor people. Whatever public ministry you have, you do you deal with poor people? Or are they too low for you? Oh, those people. You ought to not have the attitude, those people. Those will get the ones who get saved greater than the rich people. Seven five, that was it. Twelve uh oh, forty here comes my bad writing again. Twelve forty seven. Twelve forty. Oh, I got such bad handwriting. Twelve forty one. Twelve forty one. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, Jonah. Behold, greater than Jonas is here. You know what preaching does, my friend? It calls people to repent. It calls them to get right with God. You know what your light, you let your light shine. You know what that does? It just sends them off to hell. The Bible says preach. That's not what Jesus would do. You better believe that's what he did. Preaching people will get, now they may not get saved that day. They may not get saved right in front of you. You may not have them kneel down on the ground and, and receive you don't know what's going to happen later on when you preach the seed gets out there but people do repent and get right mark 1 4 mark 1 4 how you doing how's your church doing john did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin you get out there and you preach and you tell them repent and you tell them you're a sinner and only sinners need apply to the cross of Calvary. You can't come to God as a good person. There's none that do it good. No, not one. You can't come to God as a righteous man. You're a Pharisee. You're a hypocrite. You've got to come to Jesus Christ seeking a pardon and the only way to obtain a pardon is you got to come as a sinner. You got to repent. You got to be sorry for your sin. Other than that, Come on, kids, let's all have fun. Let's hold hands and sing kumbaya. All right, everybody here want to receive Jesus? Raise your hand. Did you preach the gospel to him? No, we had fun and games. Did you preach the gospel to him? Did you preach the gospel? Uh, Words have been fun and games. You ought to get the lesson I did about play, P-L-A-Y. Many like that one. About the word play in the Bible. You won't do it. 114. I kicked some of your gods. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Uh oh. John was put in prison for the ministry. Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Well, my friend in church, he was persecuted. They're trying to stop my friend. Oh, the family hates that guy for getting the gospel track. They just don't like him for doing Jesus. What do you do? You get out there and preach the same Jesus, preach the same gospel. Don't let anybody else trying to hinder you. You get out there and preach the gospel. And guess what? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Don't let persecution, don't let problems, don't let anybody stop you from preaching the gospel. You get out there and do it also. That simple. That's the one. 138. 138. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next town. I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their villages throughout Galilee, all Galilee, and cast out devils. Stay in your church. Be part of your church. Be, a, be a, a comfort to your church. Be a Christian in your church. But step out the city of your church. Go into surrounding areas of your church. Because I guarantee there's not all churches out there doing what they're supposed to be doing. There are places in the world where a church should be preaching the gospel and they're not. 
And there are cities, there are places, there are towns where the gospel is not being preached. Go there. Find a ministry that God can give and bless you with. We got places where the gospel is not. So we bring the gospel to them. It may not be your hometown. It may not be your, your church's town. Find somewhere where Jesus is not preached. Jesus is not brought to the people. And bring Jesus to that town. 38, 39. 2-2. Two, two. Mark 2-2. Two, two. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door as he preached the word unto them. Oh, I wish crowds would build up. I wish crowds. And you know what? You may have crowds. You may have a lot of people. You may get many people. We do sometimes. Don't let the crowd stop you from preaching the gospel. You get a big bunch of people that are all around you and they surround you. <coughs> Excuse me. Continue to preach the gospel. Don't let people hinder you. You, you, you're going to preach for 15 minutes, preach for 15 minutes. You're going to preach for a half hour, preach for a half hour. You're going to preach for 45 minutes, preach 45 minutes. Don't let the people stop you. Keep going. As long as you have that open door. Keep going. Keep going. That seemed to be uh, a theme here. Keep going. 314. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Go ye all into the world and preach the gospel. That is a commission for every Christian to do. All. Mark 16. I mean, excuse me, Mark 6, 12. Mark 6, 12. They went out and preached that men should repent. What is the message of the gospel? Repent! Not come to church. Not one place that we found. Come to our church. You need to repent. You're a sinner. Three basic sins of all men. You you disarmed your parents. You told a lie. And you stolen something. That's three basic sins for all men. And those acts. Have you ever taken anything? Well, yeah. You're a sinner. You need to repent. You ever misbehave? Misbehave? For your parent, well, yeah, you're a sinner. You need to repent. You're not a good little boy. You're not a little good little girl. God's not going to give you time out. God's going to give you judgment for those sins that you're going to do. Repent of those sins. Seek a pardon. Pardon means you're guilty. That's what you need to pray. And people are not going to like you. They're not going to like that man. You turn people out. That's not what Jesus do. You're going to have people turn away from God. Shut up and read your Bible and study your Bible. Get right with God. Because look what we're doing. Preach, 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 preach. Stop preaching to me, preacher. Why? Right, the Bible says do it. Mark 16, 15. Here we go. And he said, Jesus said unto them, Go ye all into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, we're just going to have a movie night. And we're going to show everybody a Christian movie. That's not the gospel. And that's not preaching. That's today's modern church that makes God sick. Luke 3.18. Hey, I'm just reading the Bible. Am I, am I not going from the Bible? Have I stepped aside? Have I give you some unknown weird doctrine here? Have we not say book, chapter, number, and verse? Have I not read to you what the King James Bible says? Don't get upset with me. Get upset with God. He wrote it, not me. 3.18. And many other things in his... Exhortation, preach ye unto the people. Exhortation. You got to tell them what to do. You got to tell them how to do it. You got to tell them what they are. You've got to exhort the people. You're to blame. You are not right with God. You need to get right with God. How do I get right with God? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And you got to tell them their religion's wrong. You got to tell them what they're doing is wrong. And the only way to heaven, only way to the Father is by Jesus Christ alone. Nothing else, not of works. You got to tell that to the people. And boy, they're going to just hate you. But that's preaching. That's preaching. It's what Jesus Christ has done, not what we've done. 
You got to encourage. 722. Encourage. You got to encourage other men on the street. Hey, you know, we go door knocking. I am so glad you go door knocking. Man, I, I pray for you guys. How are you guys doing? I pass out gospel. Today. That is great. Keep doing it. I don't do anything. Come on. Come join us. Come join that. Come take some track. Come do. Go do. It's fun. 722. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way. And tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see. We read this already. The lame walk. And lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor the gospel preach. You know, a poor soul is a man that's going to die and go to hell. He will have no riches, no reward, no inheritance for all eternity. Pull him out of hell so, I mean, if he don't get no crowns, he don't get no inheritance, he doesn't get no rewards, at least he can walk on the street of gold. Better than the street of fire. That's in the street of fire. 960. Luke 960. 960. See, you're excited. You better believe I'm excited. I love telling people about Jesus. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. My family won't do it. And let them die. They're dead. You witness to them, you've done your best. Pray for them, send them gospel tracts, but don't let them stop you. My co-workers, they won't listen to me. You witness to them. You do the best you can, but go tell others. There are others who are dying and going to hell. Don't stop preaching just because you're in a circle. Won't listen. There are people dying out there. They need to hear the gospel. Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And he said many will go to Broadway. He didn't say everybody's going to get saved. He didn't say everybody was going to listen to you. He didn't say everybody's going to get on the happy wagon of religion. But look for the few that will go through the straight gate. Look for the few that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Go out and get them. It's that simple. Luke 11, 32. Don't let anybody stop you. I encourage you. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't slow down. The men of Nineveh, again, we read this, shall rise in judgment with this generation, shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas. Jonas didn't have a carnival. Jonah didn't put on a, 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 a fun for all. Jonah went in there and said, God's going to judge you. You're going to die. Bye. And then he sat out underneath a tree and watching God to destroy them. Great preaching. But he preached the message. And the message that God told him to preach that he preached, the entire city got right with God. How's that? How's that for example of Jesus for about preaching? Do what Jonah's did. Preach what God told you to do. What did God tell you to do as we turn to 2417? He said, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. 2447. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. See that? Repentance. That's out today in the churches. A remission. Only Jesus Christ can wash away your sins. That's what to be preached. Acts 4 2. Acts 4 2. I didn't read anywhere about your light shine, have I? Acts 4 2, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. We've been reading about preaching the gospel. What is the gospel? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures. In 33 AD, the apostles are throughout Jerusalem. They're preaching Jesus Christ arose. Christ arose. Hallelujah. That's to be the same message in 2019. And he's coming. He's coming. 542. 542. 
daily in the temple in every house cease not to preach or cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ there it is again we're to preach and we're to teach I stand on the street corner and I preach the gospel and I'll sit down with the table sit down in the chair with somebody and I will teach the Bible preach the gospel teach the Bible that's our job that's our job 8 4 8 4 chapter 8 verse 4 therefore they that were scattered aboard went everywhere preaching the word and Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them you preach the word you preach the gospel you preach Jesus Christ you don't get it oh sodomites are gonna go to hell Oh, so sick of Calvinism. You Calvinism, you don't know what you're doing. That lady that dresses too short. No, that's not what you preach. You preach the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day. Your only hope is the blessed hope. Jesus Christ, that is it. Nothing else. Nothing else. That was 8-12, uh, 8-12, 8-12. And when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God's coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus Christ. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved only by Jesus Christ. You don't preach the Pope. You don't preach your pastor. You don't preach yourself. You preach in the name of Jesus Christ alone. They ought to not know your name. Now, if you're door knocking, that'd be proper to say, hi, my name is this. This is, my, this is the person with me. But then it's all to be about Jesus Christ. All about Jesus Christ and nothing else. Verse 25. And they went and, and they, when they had, yeah, testified and preached the word of the Lord. You're to preach the word of God. You're to preach the scriptures. You're to preach the gospel. You're to preach from the King James Bible. Modern Bibles are not Bibles at all. 920. Look all the rules were set forth by the Bible. Preach the gospel. Go to every city, preach the gospel. There's all kinds of ministries for you to do with the gospel. You're to have the word. You're to have Jesus Christ. You're to have repentance. You're to teach and preach. 920. 920. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. That he is the son of God. Walk up to a Jehovah witness and says, Thomas said, my Lord, my God, your religion is vain because Jesus is God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father. You've got to kick religions. You've got to teach these people. The religion you are in is not correct. It's not going to save you. It's not God approved. Only by Jesus Christ. Only by his gospel. you got to tell them that Jesus Christ is God. Unitarians, Jehovah Witnesses don't believe that at all. You're going to have to teach them. You're going to have to show them with the Bible. you got to be ready. you got to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. you got to teach the heathen of their ways. And the way of Jesus. The truth of Jesus. The way of Jesus. The life of Jesus. It's that simple. 1042. 1042. I get excited. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. <coughs> and to testify. That is he which was ordained of God to be judged the quick and the dead. Who else am I to preach to the people? You're going to stand before God's judgment. If you're saved, you're going to stand for the judgment seat of Christ. 
There are ways you can lose. You're not going to lose your soul, but you can lose rewards. You can lose crowns. You can lose inheritance. If you're not saved, you're going to stand before God. If your name is not in that land's book of life, you will go into the lake of fire that burneth forever. you got to preach hell. They don't like hell. I have dealt with Christians who don't like hell. And go, well, we go out and, and witness to the kiddies. When you tell me you don't like hell, you don't like the word hell being preached, but you, you, you go preach to other people and you don't like hell, you got to preach hell. What else are they going to get saved from? You cannot, you cannot color coat, you cannot sugar coat, you cannot gloss over the Bible so we can gain people to get saved and that may not get saved. But in your ways that get saved, they're not saved. It has to be the gospel. It has to be hell. It has to be heaven. It has to be death. It has to be blood. It has to be repentance. It has to be for them to repent. It has to be a pardon. A pardon, again, is you're guilty. You've got to be guilt. And the only way to clean that guilt, the only way to cleanse you of your sin, the only way is through the blood of the land that take away the sin of the world. That's it. Nothing else. You got trouble if you anything else. Eleven. 19. 11, 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution, uh oh, persecution, troubles, problems. Sometimes it's not going to be easy in any public ministry. That arose about Stephen travailed as far, traveled as far as Phoenice, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to the, yeah, preaching the word to none. But the Jews only. My son has, has been yelled at many times when he was here by Walmart manager. Don't do that here in our store. Don't pass out tracks in our store. We had many times people were in our public. We don't want you doing that. We're calling the police. Don't do that here. Shut up. Too loud. We don't like you. You're going to cause business to go away. There are going to be people who are going to hate you with a hatred by you preaching the gospel. You still preach the gospel. And find somewhere else to do it too. Listen, I say I preach on the streets, but I pass out gospel tracts. I witness it. I, there are many ministries. Not just one. To partake. Acts 11.20 And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. He has to be Lord in your life. He has to be Jesus Christ in your life. He has to be the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, for you to preach the Savior. That's simple. 13.5. 13.5. And when they were at Samos, Salma, they preached the word of God. Preach the word of God. Not ideas, not thoughts, not Hebrew, not Greek, not education. They preached the word of God. 1338. 1338. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Yea, you are a sinner. Yea, you have sinned against God. But there is a hope. And that hope rests upon the Lamb of God. To take away the sin of the world. Wonderful, great. 14.7. 14.7. 14.7. Yeah. And there they preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. 14.15. And saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We, are, we also are men of like passions with you, preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven. You're into religion, you're into idolatry, you're into anything that's not God. Return to God, get right from God, repent of that re pagan religion, repent of that religion, repent of what you're doing, and do right and get right with God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What you do is not God approved. Jesus Christ is God approved. 
Ooh, that would make friends. That would make friends. 21. Verse 21. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many. Have you seen? Preaching, teaching, gospel, the word of God, Jesus Christ, repentance, pardon. You seen the, the, the overflow of what we're getting here. 1535, I think. Again, another my bad handwriting. Paul and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord. Take a Christian friend with you. Take others with you. Take someone who hasn't gone with you. Say, come, come with us. Come learn. We love the Lord. Let's go tell people about Jesus. Come. Bring somebody. Shouldn't really do it alone either. You need a witness. You need somebody to back you up. 1535, 16-6. Jesus sent them out two by two. You really don't want to be alone in a public ministry, especially knocking on doors. You want to have somebody to witness, and you want to have them to witness you, and you witness them. Go out two by two. Find somebody. Now when they had gone throughout Perga and the region of Galatia, they were forget, forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. There may be places where God will say, no, don't go. There may be a sign that says no trespassing, no solicitation, no panhandling, no... Don't do it. Don't go there. Obey the signs. There are other ways you can get behind a gated community. There's other places where you're not allowed here. There's mail tracks. Get their phone number and call them. But if there's a sign that says no trespassing, don't trespass. No solicitation. I know, and you could adjust through the law, but be proper. All right? Find somewhere where you can do it legally. Somewhere where you can do it properly. 17.3. 17.3. Open the legend that Christ must needs has suffered and risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus whom I preach unto you. Christ, there it is. There's the gospel again. The gospel being preached. Nothing else. He's not giving away candy. He's not giving away prizes. He's not bringing in clowns. He is preaching the gospel. If you don't like it, that's tough. If you don't agree with God, that's a problem between you and God. God has told us to preach the gospel, and Christians like, and hey, they're going to hate us. That's what the Bible said. They're not going to like it. That's what the Bible said. I do not like being like. Well, good. Take a stab at your ego and go out there and stand up for Jesus Christ. Because they gave him a a crown of thorns, and they gave them nails and death. That was 17, 17, 13. But when the Jews of Thessalonica acknowledged that the word of God was preached, you got it? The word of God, not the word of man, not the word of the preacher, not the word of the church, the word of God. You don't go on the out in the street corner, you don't go not. My preacher says this man with this multi-billion dollar book says I say no thus saith the Lord says 20 verse 9 20 verse 9 20 verse 9 there sat in the window a certain young man named Eutychus we fall into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third law and was taken up dead. See, why'd you put that in there? Some preaching is going to be long and boring. Boy, I heard some preachers like that. I tell you, if I didn't have a seat pap, I would fall asleep. I, I've had a preacher... I would call, <coughs> excuse me, salt teens in the desert. 
That was my nickname for him. Salt fiends in the dead. Eh, he's just dry and dead. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Romans 115. Romans 115. <coughs> Excuse me. So as much as he in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome always. Be ready to preach the gospel. You never know when God's going to open up a door. Romans 10 8. It could be in the grocery store line. It could be on the sidewalk. Romans 10 8. But what say it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and the heart that is the word of faith which we preach. There it is. The word, the word, the word. 14. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings. Remember, that's what gospel means, of good things. God has sent you to go preach the gospel. God has told you, go in all the world and preach the gospel. They may not like it, but God likes it. God approves of you preaching the gospel. They may not, but God does. 1 Corinthians 1.17 1 Corinthians 1.17 For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not words of wisdom. But the cross of Christ should be made of none of that. Listen, don't use big, huge dictionary words. Preach the gospel plain and simple so they'll understand, they'll hear. 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which is saved is the power of God. They're going to think you're a fool. They're going to think, oh, how stupid you are. But God, remember, God loves the work. God loves you doing it. God is approving of you preaching the gospel. Not everybody is going to listen. Not everybody is going to get right. Not all is going to be happy. Verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified. How's that? The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Chapter 2, verse 4. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. So don't go out there and be a, a philosopher of big words. Preach the gospel plain and simple so they can understand. 914. 914. 9.14. Even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Make your living. Make your standard on. Let it be your living. Let it be as a career. Let it be as you're, you're having food intake. Let it be as you're, you're taking in air. Let it be part of your nature. To preach the gospel. And that can be done with gospel tracts. That can be done preaching. That could be knocking on doors. That could be sending out letters. And lastly, verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For it necessary is laid on me. Yea, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. God commanded you to do it. What's the will of God for me? Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the word of God. Nothing else. Teach them. Preach to them. Preach about Jesus. Jesus alone. Keep your name out of it. Keep your church out of it. Get them to acknowledge they are a sinner. Get them to acknowledge they need a pardon. They are guilty of their sin. Get them to repent of their sin. And be sorry for their sin. And they have to turn from their sin. Don't get them to, oh yeah, I'm a sinner. I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to keep doing it. That's not true repentance. See, true repentance is not tears. 
<laughs> no. It's the change of heart and it's a new creature. Where repentance shows. In this day and age, many do not go to church. Many funerals are not held in church. Many weddings are not held in churches anymore. And they'll tell you, well, keep in the church house. Why? You're not going there. And God has told me to bring it out to you. The church is not a building. It's a group of people that are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're not part of Jesus Christ, you're not part of the church. And I am sending you an invitation. God has sent forth me to tell you, you can come join our family. You can't do your religion. You can't do your works. You can't ignore it. You can't make God go away. You can't cry atheism. You've got to crawl and cry upon Jesus Christ with a repentant heart that you are guilty. And you're not even worthy of the pardon that God's offering you. And your light is not going to show that to them. And a lot of times if you're going to claim your light, all you're showing is your light of your ego and your loftiness in the attic that's full of garbage. When God says, preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and only by Jesus Christ. Don't bring no toys. Don't bring no entertainment. Don't bring no world into it. The Bible says, marvel not the world hates you. I'm sorry, the church today is, is, is failing. The church, what they call evangelism, is not godly evangelism. It's a big entertainment. You don't like it? Well, you take it up with God. And if, if I'm wrong in the eyes of God, I don't believe I am, it, it'll be wood, hay, or stubble, but I don't think I'm wrong. I think you're wrong. I think you need to repent of all that nonsense and get back to the gospel by what we said, the word of God. The word of God. Isn't that what we read? 